What's going on guys? This is Tall Rick with Urban Cow Gaming and I'm here to give you another tutorial. Uh, this time with the Supercritical Phase Shifter. This is another multi-block in the mechanism mod. Link in the description. The first link in the description is a link to the mod page. And the second link is a link to the creator's Patreon page. Wink wink, nudge nudge. So I'm going to start with the build this time around so that those who know roughly what they want can get um, get that and get out of here and back into their Minecraft world. So what you want to start with is this this uh, donut-like shape. Uh, what goes in the middle of this is the SPS port. Um, you're going to want to use as much reactor glass as possible because the SPF or the SPS casing is extremely expensive. So, you're going to want to use as little of it as possible. Then once you got this, uh, I'd call it a fat cross, you're going to want to put your SPS casings, like so, and also the sur supercharged coil right in the middle there. I'll get to the descriptions after I'm done with the build. I just want to get the build out of the way. And then you do the same shape. For all the sides and the top. So again you want to basically have it set up like that. And like that. And we're going to do that for all four sides. Okay, now we're done with all four sides, so now we'll do the top, and again, I'm going to put this SPS casing like so, just like the bottom, and then make the exact same shape as the one on the bottom there, out of reactor glass. Okay, now I should have probably left some room for myself, because I'm going to need to get in there. So now we put these uh, ports in the necessary locations. Looks like I missed some. Oh yeah, that's my escape route. Okay, so now we get out of here. Replace that. Break it again because I forgot to put the supercharged coils in there. And this is the most efficient way to build this that I've seen so far in terms of uh, usage of SPS casings since um, these are these SPS casings are, are four polonium each and one plutonium so uh, if you're reaching this point you already know how expensive that is and then you just fill in the square like so again it has to be SPS, SPS casings okay and then you need the S two more SPS ports, one for the input and one for the output. And then you also need to fill in these edges here. All the edges have to be SPS casings. And there it is, a completed supercritical phase shifter. So, but you're not really done yet. This won't work like this. Um, each one of these has to have power. You can play around with the design however you want. Uh, doesn't really matter. It's not all that important. Just as long as you have a cable running to every single one of these. And you got to make sure you remember the bottom. demonstration doesn't need to be pretty. Alright, so that's all six sides being powered, and then you just have the power come off of there and into some kind of power structure. Uh, so in that case, that this case, it will be a creative energy cube. And then this takes... Uh, polonium and converts it into antimatter. 
So polonium is considered a gas, so you're going to need pressurized tubes for it. The only place to get polon polonium from is a fission reactor uh, through another machine. Solar neutron activator. Okay, so... Alright, so the input for the solar neutron activator needs to be from the bottom. It's the only side that'll work. You can't actually, unlike most of the mechanism ch machines, you can't change that. And then we will grab a nuclear waste chemical tank. Make sure that is set to output. And you'll see that it's producing the polonium in this machine. All right. So as you can see, this is creating polonium out of the nuclear waste. It goes pretty fast, so the limiter here is going to be with your fission reactor. We're, gonna, we're just going to pretend that this is a fission reactor, such as the one we have over there. If you want to see my tutorial on fission reactors, you can check that out. So we're just going to pretend that's a fission reactor. That goes into here, is turned into polonium, and then the polonium goes into the the supercritical phase shifter. So you'll notice that it's actually not doing all that much. It's only doing 56 millibuckets per tick because that's, and that's because you need a lot of power to actually get this to be very efficient. Right, so this one's at 483 millibuckets or 0.483 millibuckets per tick. That's because it's fed by a induction matrix. Now I'm not going to get into the construction of an induction matrix right now, but I'd recommend getting it, uh, especially since this, these take a long time to gather the resources for, so while you're waiting for your fissile fuel to burn out, you can just spend that time upgrading your induction matrix, uh, because it sucks to build an entire high-level induction matrix all at once. You can always, um, break pieces off of the induction matrix and use them to upgrade it. And then the the actual antimatter that the device produces is also considered a gas. And to get that into a position where you can actually use it, you're going to need a crystallizer, chemical crystallizer. You'll see that it's uh, getting antimatter there. Of course that needs to be powered. And then that's 1,000 antimatter for a single antimatter uh, pellet. So if we go over here, see that this one is a little bit quicker. We have 13 antimatter pellets saved up here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, you're going to want to make as much of this as possible out of this reactor glass because um, I can show you the recipe for the SPS casing. Yeah, so that's f four polonium pellets and one plutonium pellets, or, or one plutonium pellet, which is a total of 50,000 nuclear waste, which is uh, because the fission reactor, I believe, produces nuclear waste one-to-one -one with fissile fuel. That's 50,000 fissile fuel uh, burning through your nuclear reactor to, in order to actually uh, make a single block of this. This is the minimum amount of SPS cases, casings you can get away with. And also keep in mind that each individual SPS port is four SPS blocks. And you need six of those ports. And I want to thank you for watching. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.